This one's for all the conspiracy theorists out there. NVIDIA has proved that the moon landing was real by generating a fake one. Welcome to What the Future. On today's show, proof that the moon landing happened, if all the other proof wasn't good enough for you. A ridiculous fire truck concept that might be crazy enough to work. And lastly, Russia releases dramatic video from a failed manned rocket launch. But first, let's get lunar. NVIDIA was looking for a way to show off Maxwell, its new graphics processing unit. So it decided to take on one of the most famous bits of evidence that the moon landing was faked. Conspiracy theorists have said that the lighting in this photo, taken by Neil Armstrong, was impossible since the sun was the only source of light and Buzz Aldrin was in the shadow. That sounds like it could be true until you account for the reflected light. The NVIDIA team made an exact replica of the moon landing using Unreal Engine 4. With that model, Maxwell was able to calculate the light bounce using what's called voxel-based global illumination, or VXGI. VXGI is basically a huge leap forward in processing how light bounces off surfaces in 3D renderings. The NVIDIA team discovered that Aldrin had been lit by the sun's reflection off the moon's surface as well as by the sun's reflection off of Armstrong's spacesuit. Another famous bit of evidence, beloved by moon doubters, is the lack of stars in the sky. NVIDIA has an answer for that too. It's basically the same reason we can't see stars during the day on Earth. The sun makes everything else too bright. If you wanted a picture of the stars in the sky on the daylight side of the moon, this is what you would get. Pretty ugly. Can you imagine the kinds of comments the astronauts would have got if they'd brought back pictures like that? This fire truck concept seems like the brainchild of a 12-year-old Tony Stark on a sugar high, and I can't stop watching it. When there's a fire in town, you sure as heck don't want your fire trucks to get stuck in traffic. But the twisted minds over at Dahir Inchat have a solution. The same engineering company that brought you flying trains and the drive through supermarket wants to revolutionize how we fight fires. This concept fire truck can sail over traffic. And when it arrives at the scene, firefighters ride a massive drone to the upper floors to meet the fire. The drone is armed with cannons. Not sure what the firefighters are loading into them, but I'm guessing it's some sort of flame retardant. Once the fire has been doused, it's time to rescue the bystanders. Ladders have their limitations. Maybe drones really are the answer. The idea of fighting fires with drones isn't new. Latvian company Arones tested a firefighting drone last year, and it was able to reach heights significantly greater than those reachable by firefighter ladders. Makes this concept fire truck look a little less ridiculous, doesn't it? Russia is preparing for its next crewed rocket launch, even though the last one didn't go so well. On October 11th, a Russian Soyuz rocket failed mid-flight in an attempt to bring NASA astronaut Nick Haig and Russian cosmonaut Alexei Ovchinin to the International Space Station. The failure occurred when one of the strap-on booster blocks failed to separate properly, smacking into the central core rocket stage of the Soyuz, resulting in decompression of the core's fuel tank. The rocket lost altitude control, and the escape system was triggered automatically. The escape procedure has been described as being launched sideways out of a shotgun. The two would-be space explorers landed in Kazakhstan on relatively flat terrain and were immediately sent for medical evaluation. Thankfully, both men were fine and Nick Haig has said he's ready to fly again. Russian investigators have since determined the failure was due to a deformed sensor that was damaged during assembly. Since the mission failure on October 11th, three Soyuz rockets have been successfully launched and the date of the next crewed launch has actually been moved up from December 20th to December 3rd. We'll be watching. Best wishes to all for a safe and successful mission. Astronauts bravely risk their lives, pushing their bodies and minds to extremes in an attempt to expand the limits of human knowledge a little bit farther with each mission. Instead of doing a viewer question this week, I'd like to take a minute to respond to the plethora of comments that we get doubting the accomplishments of NASA and its scientists. My late grandfather was a solar physicist and a veteran who dedicated his life to the discovery of objective truth. Most people who pursue science as a career are interested in discovering objective truths because that's what science is in its most basic form. If you doubt a scientific truth, 
That's great. Skepticism is a huge part of science, but skepticism alone doesn't make truth, and it certainly doesn't make science. The scientific method has been the basis of scientific advancement for centuries. Here's how it works. You have an idea. The moon landing is fake. You turn that idea into a question. How did they fake it? You formulate a hypothesis. I think this is how they faked it. You make predictions. This is what I expect will happen when I test my hypothesis. Now it's time to conduct your experiments. To minimize errors, make sure you have some sort of control group for the thing that you're testing, and make sure that another scientist could conduct the same experiment and achieve the same results. This is something called peer review, which is hugely important in the scientific community. Lastly, analysis. What do the results mean? Do they support your hypothesis or not? If this sounds like a lot of work, of course it is. Discovery of objective truth isn't easy. If it were easy, we'd all be scientists. That's all I have to say on the matter. Bring on the hate, the love, and the harebrained hypotheses in the comments. Thanks so much for watching What the Future. I'm your host, Jesse Orrell. We'll see you next time.